Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to set up the monster spawner so that we can spawn our enemies at their initial spawn location once we kill them. It's going to be pretty simple to do, pretty straightforward. I want to start this off by creating an empty game object. This is going to act as our spawner for our slimes. I'm just going to call it spawner. Oops, spanner. How about I call it spawner? There we go. And I want to create a script file that's also going to be called spawner. And once that compiles, I'm going to attach it to my spawner game object. I want to go ahead and open this up. Now, spawner is just going to have a way to track some time so we can see how much time has lapsed since we called for this to respawn. So we can tell if it has been, say we have a 10 second delay on the respawn. We can tell it's been, okay, it's been 10 seconds. Now let's go ahead and respawn this enemy. And all the enemy is going to have to do is that it has to know what spawner spawned it. So we'll have that set up as a reference for it. And then we also have to communicate with the spawner and say, okay, I'm ready to respawn now because I'm dead. So I'm ready to spawn another one. And that will initialize the timer. And then after the time has ran out, we will spawn the new enemy at the spawner's location. Pretty simple to do, pretty cool. So let's get started. I want to set up a couple of fields that we can access in the inspector. And as per usual, this is going to be publicly accessible. We could just serialize the fields and make them private. But since we're going to be just adding this to the rest of what we already have, anything that's in the inspector has been public. So it's going to be a public game object, and I'm going to call it monster. So we can just add any object, any game object to this. Uh, but ideally, it's going to be a monster that has an enemy, uh, an enemy interface. Then I want a bool so we can check to see if this is something that should respawn when it dies because if it's not then we'll just have this unchecked and when something dies it'll tell the spawner but the spawner won't care because it doesn't have to do anything with it and then I want to have the delay so how much time has to lapse once the enemy dies and then when it respawns maybe it's just a few seconds maybe it's a few minutes whatever it may be it's gonna be a float and it's going to be just called delay or say spawn delay and then I also want to be able to track a local time so we can uh, in update every frame or every it doesn't matter if it's every frame or whatever as long as it's uh, a, a scaled time that we can we'll subtract it from that so we can keep track of how much time has lapsed so I'll do a private float and I'll just call it current time or something like that and then I also want a another bool here is going to allow us to determine if something is currently queued up to be spawned so this isn't really necessary but I'll explain what I'm going to do with it really quick um, spawning maybe in update we're going to be deducting the time every single frame and then once it meets zero or less we're going to spawn the enemy but if we're not actually trying to spawn an enemy currently say the respawn uh, is false or say the enemy's still alive there's no reason to have all that calculating with removing the time and checking the time so we'll just make sure first of all that we need to spawn something before we handle all the time stuff and then if we do need to spawn something then we'll get to the time so in start uh, first of all let's have a just a method here called spawn and this is going to handle actually instantiating the object and then assigning its the object spawner to this spawner but I want to have that set up so I can first of all lay out my code how I want it to be. We're going to right off the bat, we're going to spawn the enemy on the spawner because when the game starts, I prefer that all of the enemies be spawned if they have a spawner. And then what I would like to do once that happens, I'll set the current or sorry, yeah, we'll set the current time to be equal to the spawn delay. Now we're doing this, we're starting the current time out at the delay instead of starting out at zero and then increasing it. And I just prefer doing it though. There's no reason for doing it that way. So now what I want to do is I'm going to have two methods here. One of them is going to be uh, spawn and one of them is going to be a public method called respawn. Now spawn, like I said, is going to handle instantiating the object and assigning a, a, a field or two to something. And then respawn is going to handle just really resetting the timer and saying that we're currently spawning. So. Like I said before, I want to make sure I'm spawning something before I mess with the time. And then once the time is being messed with, once it gets down to zero, we'll spawn. 
So the way this is going to work is I'm first of all going to say spawning is equal to true. So we are going to end up spawning something. So in a sense, I'm letting it know that I have queued up a spawn. And then I want to set the time of current time to be equal to spawn delay. Because chances are, if this um, has spawned something before this, then current time would be zero or less. So this wouldn't work. So I have to reset it every time I spawn. It'd be like, okay, so now I'm starting over. I want to again check to see if I should uh, spawn a new enemy. And it's going to reset it to whatever the default spawn delay that we set in the inspector was. Pretty cool. So maybe we're going to have five seconds. Every time an enemy dies, it takes five seconds to spawn the enemy back. Well, spawn delay will be five seconds. Then when I do respawn, current time is going to be set to five seconds. Then every, uh, every frame is going to calculate based on a, a scaled time, how much time has passed. Eventually it'll get down to counting seconds down. And then once it hits zero, we're going to call spawn. So to do that, I want to first check to make sure that we have something responding. So I'm going to say if spawning, because we're saying spawning true once that's called. If spawning, then I want to take the current time and subtract the time dot delta time. And I'm not sure if we use this yet in this series. Um, this is just going to give us the lapse time bef uh, between frames. Since this runs every single frame, all we have to know is how much time that frame took. And then we'll take that amount of time off of our current time. Because we can't just subtract some number because we don't know how long the frame took. It, it depends on how long the frame took. If the frame took one-tenth of a second, and all of our frames take one-tenth of a second, well, we're getting... 10 frames per second, right? One tenth of a second, and it happens 10 times in a frame. So then it takes 10 of these single frames to make one second. So the amount of time it took for that frame, everything in that frame to execute, is what's important for us. So if spawning, work with the time, and then we could do this in a more compact way, but I want to write it out so we can actually read what's happening. If the current time is less than or equal to zero. So if we've counted down far enough to get to zero or less, then all I want to do is spawn, right? So if that is in fact true, then we'll do whatever spawn says. And the last thing I want spawn to do is say that spawning is false. Because once it's spawned, we're going to set spawning to false. Once we have to spawn something, we'll set it back to true. But while it's false, this won't run, so we won't be going into some ridiculous number. And I don't guess it's really all that important. It just seems silly to have this happening um, when it doesn't need to be doing anything. If your game ran forever, then current time would be a negative massive number, and we don't want that. Pretty cool. So now I want to go ahead and pretend that all this data is set up. So I want to go in here, and I want to create an, uh, an eye enemy object is what we're going to spawn. I'm going to grab the eye enemy component. It's an interface that our slime is implementing. And I want to call it instance like we usually do here. And I want to instantiate it just like that. And we're going to instantiate a monster. We're going to instantiate it at the transform dot, transform dot position uh, location vector. So wherever this, this spawner is, the one that's spawning it, it'll spawn it at this spawner. And then I want to set the rotation to quaternion dot identity to give us a default location or rotation. And now this is looking for the I enemy, right? So we have to make sure that we give it something that's implementing the interface for enemy. So it's going to be a get component, uh, not slime, I enemy. Because the slime that we're actually instantiating here, in this case, it might be whatever you're instantiating, but in my case, it's a slime, we know that it's implementing I enemy. Now, you probably want to check for this if you didn't know for sure what you were implementing or what you were instantiating, in fact, had that interface implemented. But I know for a fact mine does, so I'm not going to worry about it. And now is where I would assign this spawner to be the spawner on that enemy, but we'll have to do that after we set it up in our interface. So in our enemy interface, let me zoom in a bit here for you. I'm going to create a property. It's going to be a spawner. And I am going to, oops, call it spawner is fine. So spawner, the top we just created, I'm going to call it spawner. 
and get rid of the accessor because the accessory because that's pointless and then in our slime that implements I enemy it's not giving me an error yet but it will if I save it again it's saying okay well you have spawner saying it's a requirement but you're not implementing it so what I want to do is do a pro uh, prop again and do spawner spawner cool so now we have a spawner property on our slime so what I could do from spawner is once this happens go through the instance we just created grab the spawner and set it to equal to this because this is looking for a spawner type and this just so happens to be a spawner right it's the one that is spawning it so now whenever it gets spawned whatever instance of spawner spawns it it'll have a direct reference to that instance so we can then say whatever we want to say to the spawner from the enemy so when the enemy dies contact the spawner so now in slime all we have to do is in die whenever the enemy dies and we're doing all this and you may hook this into your event system if you would like but I'm not going to and when it dies I'm just going to go through this dot spawner and go to respawn go back in here and make sure okay so I'm calling respawn and that's going to set spawning to be true which means whatever's in here will run and in that same frame though it's going to set current time to be equal to spawn delay so we know that once it gets here current time will be equal to maybe what five seconds whatever we set it at and then it's going to go down until it gets to zero then it's going to call spawn and then spawns going to instantiate the object at its uh, location and it's going to grab that component then I'm going to set the spawner property on that enemy to be equal to the one that spawned it and then say I'm no longer looking for a spawn until we need to respawn one pretty cool so let's set this up in unity now so that gives us a monster field a respawn little checkbox and then the float field for the delay so I want to set it to be five seconds I'm going to say it does respawn and then I want to be able to add my slime prefab to my monster here so what I want to do to be able to do that is go to my resources I'm going to create a new folder I'm gonna call it enemies inside of enemies I'm going to drag this slime down in there and create a prefab then I want to take all my slimes and delete them now I have one slime prefab that will determine what all my slimes are like so now I can go to my spawner I can drag the slime prefab to my monster field just like that it's a game object that has the slime component and this script is actually implementing this class is implementing the I enemy right it's implementing the enemy interface which is what our spawner is looking for pretty cool well that should be it so let's go ahead and take this let's put it at zero what is it uh, 0.5 zero let's just move it out here somewhere and get it out of aggro range and click play and it spawned an enemy so that's good that's the starting point for this as it initially spawns and then I have an error when I equip a weapon I don't know what that is from as a result I cannot attack what scripts sword uh-huh that seems fine weapons sword it doesn't have a swole. why is that sword <laughs> I don't know why hmm that's fine I don't think I did that on purpose there we go now I can attack okay cool so let's get it pulled on us here and it works the exact same as there are the enemies obviously it is the enemy it's just spawned differently then I'm going to attack it kill it and then let's wait to see if it spawns there it is it spawned back kill it take our loot wait for it to respawn there he is and that's pretty cool so now we can just have these set up in our world how we would like I can take this spawner I can duplicate it hitting control D drag it here drag this here and you may be thinking what's the point of doing this as opposed to just spawning the enemy and then have something control when it respawns well what I would like to do is um, have this set up with a gizmo that looks like something that I can use in my scene view here to edit my maps a bit better 
And then I like being able to just swap out what enemy it is by just changing the the object that it spawns. And I like being able to control from the spawner how long it takes to respawn once it dies, or even if it does respawn. Right? So if it's a boss fight and it's like the big big bad boss that you kill one of and he's he's you've rid it the evil from that world or whatever it may be, you don't want him to spawn back because then what's the fun in that? So you want to make sure, okay, well this guy doesn't respawn. And then that case, the spawn delay doesn't matter. It can be whatever. I just think it's pretty cool. And this was voted on on the forum. We had a poll going to see if we wanted to do monster spawners. And I said there would be a way to respawn your monsters with a delay and uh, choosing what monster gets spawned. And this is what you get. It's pretty cool, pretty simple. And it's going to make laying out our dungeon uh, that we do at the end of this a bit more pleasant. And if you're interested in me and me maybe adding a... Um, like a gizmo to this for the editor so we can see it as a monster spawner, then let me know and I'll consider doing that for an episode showing you how to write a simple script that will add whatever kind of gizmo you would like to the actual tool here. But other than that, that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series. I know it's going a bit slower now than it was, but it's still going, right? I've just got to, I'm just working a lot and I've got some other things happening, but it's still going. We're still making this work, and you guys are still supporting me, so I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's kept me going, so thank you very much for that. If you have any questions, forum.gogamegrind.com. I've got a couple assets for sale, an achievement system and uh, a stat tracking system. Check it out on, my, on the forum there. Again, guys, thank you for watching. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.